Hey guys, Traveling Kimchi here, and today I'm going to be talking about Korean funerals. This is a video I've been wanting to do for quite a while because, as some of you may know, my last year in Korea, my own Korean grandmother actually passed away. And during that time, I wasn't quite sure of a lot of the Korean funeral customs. And when it's that kind of environment of grieving and people are sad, it's really not the time you want to be whispering, what do I do now? Because um, you want to be sensitive to the people around you. And it's also the place where you don't culturally want to misstep because while they might understand like, oh, she's a foreigner, she doesn't know better, um, it still has that cultural meaning ingrained so they can't help but feeling a certain way if they, they see something or um, something happens. So it's just one of those things that I think if you have to do, it, it might take a little education just so you can feel more comfortable in that environment and of course impart the correct respect of what's going on. So the type of funeral I'm going to be talking about today is the modern Korean funeral, which is kind of a mix between Western and Eastern cultures. And this is more the type of funeral that you'll be seeing in the cities like Seoul or Busan, the more modern types. If you go to the smaller towns or the rural areas, you'll most likely see a little bit more tradition in their funerals. And of course, everything I'm saying in this video you should take with a little bitty grain of salt because while a lot of what I'm saying might be held true through a lot of funerals, um, the type of funeral that you end up seeing, the type of practices that might occur during that funeral will definitely weigh heavily upon whose funeral is attending, what religion they are, and where the funeral is being located. Let's start with the basics of a Korean funeral. A Korean funeral usually lasts about three days. The first two days are for honoring the family and the deceased, and the last third day is for body preparation and burial or cremation, depending on that person's arrangements. A Korean funeral in the city is usually held in a Changre Shikjang, and it's basically a building that's located within the hospital grounds, but it's a separate building specifically for funerals. And it's kind of weird to describe it like this, but it's kind of like a funeral hotel. The building consists of a bunch of rooms that are rentable by the family, so basically they can rent a space for all three days, and they can go ahead and mourn their loved one there, they can greet guests to come in and mourn their loved one and gather. But it also means that all the other rooms are rentable by other people who are also going through funerals. So it's a little bit strange in that I feel like in American society, when someone passes away, we make it all about that unit of um, mourners. You know, they don't book another funeral like right next to yours and you guys interact with each other. It's not like that. But with Korea, it's you rent the rooms and you walk out and you see more people mourning. And then it's kind of weird, but it's kind of nice to know you're not the only one suffering loss, you know, it's, it's just a factor of life and other people are going through it too. So that's really cool. The building also has places where you can eat, where you can rent funeral clothes and all the funeral necessities. When deciding what to wear, black is okay. Although white used to be the color for Korean funerals, the Western culture is kind of influenced in that black is now more widely acceptable. It used to be that Koreans would wear, would don a white hanbok, but now they usually wear a black hanbok with a white collar. Although, when you're wearing black, do make sure that you do are wearing black socks, that's a big thing. Don't wear white socks. And also a big thing about wear is do not wear red to the funeral. Another thing to remember before you go to the funeral is to remember to prep your condolence envelope. In Korea, basically, we don't gift flowers or anything like that, we gift money. And so there's a long white envelope with Chinese characters in it that basically say, I give my condolence to you. And you enter in gift money and you'll give this to the family upon arrival at the funeral. This money is supposed to help with funeral costs and any kind of costs that might come out of the person's death, such as debt or things like that. These days, the typical amount to gift is about 50,000 won, which translates to about $50. Now, if you're teaching English in Korea, most likely at some point during your teaching career, you'll end up going to a co-worker's family's funeral. And basically, the 50,000 won is a good, you know, rough estimate of what you should gift them, them being your co-worker and all. However, you must be aware that this monetary gift is a symbol of your relationship with either the deceased or the the family of the deceased. So if your friend's grandmother passed away, obviously you might give a little bit more because you're a close friend of that person. So it's just just be aware that it's a reflection of your relationship with either the deceased or the living um, the living family of the deceased. So just be aware of how close you feel with them, like what they've done for you, things like that when you are deciding about how much you should be gifting them. 
Upon arriving, you might see these huge floral arrangements. Don't worry, you're not supposed to be giving flowers. Basically, these flowers are gifted by organizations such as the person's company that they worked for or organizations they were in or even maybe outside clubs they were in such like a church choir, things like that. I know you as a person may want to give flowers or something else, but trust me, in Korean culture, you give the monetary gift. You don't have to supply anything else. You don't have to bring flowers. Just the envelope is enough. So you're arriving at the funeral. The first thing you're going to be doing is taking off your shoes, of course, as Korean custom dictates. The next thing you're going to see a table or a desk with a little book on it. This is a guest book for you to sign in. Um, my family, when we did this, basically the guest book helped us keep track of who came to, um, to thank them later. Also, we kept track of how much money each person gave and basically when they invited us to their a funeral that they had for a family member or a friend for them or they had a, f a wedding where they also gift money um, it was it helped the family keep aware of what they did for them and so they could help repay the kindness and I kind of like that about the Korean custom um, helping each other out monetarily um, and just you know giving in your time of need giving in your time of celebration and I really liked that about Korea after you drop in the envelope, you'll enter what I kind of call the morning room or the honor room. When you enter the morning room, on the far end you'll see an altar, and on that altar you'll see a picture of the deceased. On the upper two corners you'll see two black ribbons that go across, and depending on that person's religion or what they wanted, you may say, see flowers on the altar or you may see incense, it just depends what that person chose to do. Unlike US funerals, Korean funerals don't have that viewing period, so when I first had the Korean funeral, I was wondering if the body was somewhere in the altar. It's nowhere in the room, actually. You're just paying your respects to the, the spirit, the picture of the deceased. If you look to the right of the room, this is typically where the family is. Now, they're traditional Korean. The deceased son and their son's sons will be there. So if the deceased has a son or grandson, they will typically stay in that area of the room. Less traditional families will just have their family there. But the idea behind it is that they never leave the spirit alone. So typically, it's not uncommon for the family or the son or the grandsons to stay in that room for the two to three days that the funeral takes place. So the part that comes next varies a lot about your personal religion and the deceased's religion. A lot of people don't do the traditional full Korean bow for funerals anymore because Christianity says that if you do a full bow to the floor, it's considered worship. So a lot of Christian people that attend funerals in Korea now only do the 90 degree bow at the waist. My grandmother was actually not Buddhist, so she actually asked for no bowing at her funeral from her guests. Um, a couple of guests did the bows anyways because they themselves felt uncomfortable not paying those types that that kind of respect because they grew up with it. So it really just depends on your comfort level and if you're, I guess, doing it for the family. The family will probably inform you of what that deceased person wanted, if they wanted bowing, if they didn't care, things like that. But some of the things that can happen is that you'll walk up, you'll light an incense, blow it out and place it in the incense pot and place a white flower on the, on the picture frame and do a 90 degree bow. That would be something that might appear in a Korean funeral where the person was uh, Christian. Or you may do the two and a half, the traditional two and a half bow, which consists of standing, going all the way to the floor, bowing, standing all the way to the floor, standing, and then doing a 90 degree bow at the waist. And again, this all depends on whether or not your religious or the other person's religion um, dictates basically what you'll end up doing at that time. Because there's so much to talk about when it comes to Korean funerals, I actually decided to make this video into a two-part series because there's just so many things I didn't want to cut out. You never know what kind of information a person is attending a funeral might need. So it, I just didn't want to shorten it just to make it short and watchable. But two-part series, so basically the next video will pick up where this one left off after the bowing, what comes next. So I hope you guys keep a lookout for part two. This is the Traveling Kimchi. See you guys next time. Bye!